Hello everybody and welcome to another Stellaris Explained, where we're going to go over sectors and how to effectively use them in your empire. As you can see here, I have given a sector pretty much my entire empire with the exception of my home system that I'm not capable of giving away. And I've allowed this, this game to run for 25 years here. I've given the sector all the technology that there is, I've given it as much energy and minerals as I can give to it, and I was actually taxing it at zero, but I clicked the buttons a couple times. So, as you can see, the sector has actually developed the space around it quite well. I've given it all of these uninhabitable systems that simply have resources, and it's for the most... Well, actually, no, it completely has. It's completely developed all of the space stations that it can, which is great. I think that part of the sector AI is working well. On planets, it hasn't developed everything, and there's a reason for that. Obviously, planetary constructions take quite a bit longer. And the sector AI decides on what it wants to develop once it's finished its previous building. So once it builds this farm, it's going to calculate again, say, what do I need? What's the most important resource that I can get out of this? And then it's going to decide which one is most helpful to your, uh, your or its situation. Probably the best way to put it. Sectors have a few settings that are very important to know about because without using them correctly, you're going to get into trouble. Um, as you can see here, the sector settings. First is the top row where you are going to be able to set a focus for your sector. So if, say you really need food, you can focus on food. If you really need, you know, minerals, you can set industrial. If you really need research, there's the research focus and finances for energy credits. This isn't an end-all be-all. They're not just going to build only uh, energy plants or only science labs, but they will heavily focus that. And it seems to work fairly well. For the most part, I just leave a balanced focus, though, because planet tile resources are more or less balanced in a decent way. So if you're if you just go balanced and you do not allow or you force them to respect tile resources, then they will, for the most part, do that. And um, you won't end up with a horribly imbalanced sector, basically. Uh, I don't recommend turning on military stations, but for the most part, it seems like in the Bradbury patch that I have been testing with, the military station AI is protecting important systems with colonies. So it's not terrible. Before, there were a lot of military stations that got built in random backwater systems, like maybe Kaf here would get a military station for no apparent reason, and it would drain a lot of your energy credits. Uh, space construction I leave on because that's how they build their orbital research stations and mining outposts. They will construct their own ship. Let's see if I can find it here. Here we go. This construction ship is technically mine, but also not mine because it is for the sector. I cannot command this ship. The ship gets its orders directly from the sector and as such builds within the sector. Um, let's see here. We have colonization. As of right now, in the Black Bradbury patch, the sector AI does not colonize. I don't know why. Seems to be a bug. So, turning this offer on will make no difference at all. I've been testing for 25 years and I had colonization on while it was running. Nothing happened here with uh, Barra 2. It never attempted to colonize. So, even though it had perfect habitability, well, yeah, 100% habitability, completely perfect for my people, it did not colonize there. So that setting for now is hit or miss. Hopefully it'll be fixed before the Bradbury beta goes live, but we'll see. Uh, respecting tile resources, I highly recommend. Essentially, this is just going to say if there's food on a tile, I'll show you a perfect example because I had respect tile resources off. I can select the planet here. This was a food tile. I didn't have respect tile resources on, so they built a power plant there. That's essentially what it does. If you want to respect tile resources, which generally I do for sectors because I don't trust their judgment too much, this is really great, and I usually keep it on. Redevelopment, I essentially keep off almost all the time. This is because a lot of times I will colonize a system, I will build some special buildings that I really want on that planet, say a Xeno Zoo or something like that, and I don't want the sector to come through, bulldoze that Xeno Zoo, and then get rid of it. Same thing goes for, I don't know, a military academy or some other really special building. So generally I leave re redevelopment off. Building robots is situational. If I'm swimming in energy, then sure, sectors can build their robots however they please. The sector AI for robots is actually pretty good. They will build robots in random, you know, stupid areas, like they'll build a robot here on the science 
tile, but then they will switch it over to a food or mineral tile and it's pretty good that way. As you can see here, these synthetics are giving me pretty much yeah, no, they're all giving me extra yields because they aren't put on the proper tile resources. So yeah, the the building robots and allowing sectors to manage your robot seems to be okay, at least for now in the beta patch. These are taxation things. You can tax from 0 to 75% of your sector's resources. I recommend leaving these at 0 when your sector is first created, and then after your sector is starting to create its own resources, then think about taxing it. If your sector has no minerals or it has no energy, it will not develop. It won't build buildings, it won't build space stations, and that's bad because then you just have empty space that you've colonized but you're not utilizing. So these buttons here allow you to add credits and or minerals to your sector stockpile. And that stockpile is the stockpile that's used to build its own buildings and whatnot. So actually you want to funnel a lot of minerals and energy into your sectors once they're first created. After they have a little bit of time to get the ball rolling and start creating their own stuff, you can pretty much let them coast for a while. And then once they're, you know, making good energy and minerals, you can start thinking about taxing them and reaping the benefits of the seeds you've sown from, you know, the previous decade. You can also use influence to drain the stockpile. So I can click this button, take a bunch of their resources. Some people will use sectors as a bank, essentially. So if you are maxed out on your stuff, you can dump a bunch of resources into your stockpiles. And then you essentially have a bunch of resources that are still yours, but you got to pay influence to take them back. It can be useful. I definitely... I wouldn't recommend it to a beginner, but it is something that if you have a little bit of experience and you want to play it a little more advanced, that is actually a great way to store up more resources than you actually should. And I think the last thing I want to go over before we talk about some perks and stuff would be the leaders. You can assign a governor to your sector and different governors obviously give you different bonuses. Here we have spaceport module costs. Food plus 10%, hydroponics farm build cost minus 20%. There's the architectural interest where you reduce building cost and increase building speed. There's the army veteran, which will reduce army costs and improve army build speeds. Environmental engineers, the same for tile blockers. Iron fist will improve slave mineral and food output. And intellectual will just improve science output altogether. I recommend giving a governor to your sectors. The governor is going to... Uh, let's see here. Can I click on this planet from here? I can. Okay. And let's go into happiness. No, it's not going to say. Well, essentially here you can see the, the things that it's doing. It's reducing unrest. It's improving build speed. It's reducing clear blocker time. It's improving the food output and the hydroponics output because she's agrarian. So having a governor on your sector is the same as having a governor on your planet. And it is sector wide. All the planets in the sector gain the same benefit because they have the same governor. So I highly recommend governors, especially for great governors, because then you are spreading their greatness across your sector. Okay, so let's go over the quirks of sectors. Obviously, we've talked about colonization. The sector AI in the Bradbury patch as of now does not colonize. Why, I have no idea, but just expect that. That's all I'm saying for now. Um, hopefully Paradox will fix this, but for now, just expect that they won't colonize and you need to colonize yourself. I would recommend colonizing manually anyways, because you can pick the population ethos as a result. So I don't really like my sectors to colonize on their own, unless I really just don't care about that area. So yeah, you'll need to colonize on your own. The other funny thing that I've been noticing in my tests, and I've had a few, is that sector AI does not prioritize food at all. It will only build food if it is out of food. So, because I'm negative three food, this sector has actually started building farms. But if you look at the planets themselves, they don't have any other farms because they haven't had a food problem until now. And obviously, if it has the chance, it will build over food tiles for other more valuable resources like energy and or minerals. So, I recommend having a food planet somewhere that a sector can't get to it and or building a food planet, giving it to a sector and turning off redevelopment so it doesn't tear that apart. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it for sectors. They are... They're a great part of the game, honestly. A lot of people like to give shit to the sectors and the sector AI, but the controls that we have are decent. We can actually manage a sector pretty well and prevent it from doing dumb things. 
all in all, I mean, you obviously need the sector because otherwise you will go over your directly colonized system's limit and you will lose a lot of energy and minerals as a result. So you're going to have to do it. If you want to take a planet back, you can always take a planet back by managing your sector and then returning it to you uh, at the cost of influence. And I think that's it. I hope this was useful. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know. I'd love to hear about things that I may have missed and or just not known about altogether. But uh, yeah, I think for the most part, this is a pretty complete guide. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.